did some retooling of the roster and some upgrades. What did you think about the additions that the Lakers put together? Take a look. Hey, hey man, I'm telling y'all something. With the Lakers, Rob Palenka, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Rich Paul is doing to this league. Shout to Jeannie Buss. It ain't fair, dog. It is mm. not fair. LeBron James is coming for six championships. I know we I know a lot of people tired of having that who's the GOAT argument, and he's sitting at four right now. But the Lakers are doing an amazing job of stacking the deck. They're really doing it. They added Montrez Harold and Dennis Schroeder in the same offseason. You do know that those are the yep. top two people for six men in a year along with Lou Williams, yep. right? Yep. Yep. You, you, and they still have Anthony Davis, right? They added Mark Gasol. They added Mark Gasol. Just so when they play against the Joker or they go against another big guy, they have another big body. They still have six fouls. They add Wesley Matthews, a seasoned veteran. His dad won championships playing with Magic in the Lakers. Hey, man, I'm trying to tell you something. I, I, I like that many teams in the Western Conference have all NBA talented players that they can build around so the kings they can sign fox shout to the utah jazz they still have donovan mitchell and bogdanovich luka Doncic is there there's so much young promise for so many teams and phoenix suns and all of that but the los angeles lakers continue to solidify themselves as head and shoulders the best team in basketball Absolutely. And Jalen, the former MVP of the NFL, Lamar Jackson, did not look like it in a game against the Titans. We have that. Carson Wentz looking terrible, too, and much more. We'll break it all down right after this. Stay tuned. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen and Monday, uh, Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz agreeing to a five-year max extension worth up to 195, coming off a postseason where he averaged over 36 points per game. And ditto for Jason Tatum, cashing in five-year max extension with Boston, also worth up to $195 million for the first-time All-Star in 2020. Lakers agreed to a deal with Mark Gasol, the defending champs reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up space for his signing. And the man... He's not, he's not even the man, the myth. He's the man, the legend. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski just working like crazy. The draft, free agency, insane. All right. So, obviously, the Lakers aren't resting on their laurels, right? So, they trade for Dennis Schroeder. They add Gasol. They add Montrez Harrell. What are you hearing about everything they're doing this offseason? Well, it's pretty rare when a defending champion actually upgrades their bench and upgrades players who... Upgrades on players who helped them win a title. Rajon Rondo went to Atlanta. Uh, Dwight Howard goes to Philly. So they bring in Dennis Schroeder in a trade, a sixth man of the year candidate. Marcus Gasol, future Hall of Fame center, won a title two years ago in Toronto. He comes in now um, in the middle. And this is a this is a Laker team that around the edges has gotten even better. Rob Palenka has had a very good offseason here after uh, the Lakers finally won uh, that title with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. All right, so we don't know where they're going to play. Let's say they do play in the Staples Center and the other team that occupies the Staples Center this season, of course, uh, being the L.A. Clippers. And it almost feels like some kind of arms race, like, you know, Whatever you do, yeah. I can do better. So the Clippers have added Serge Ibaka. He reunites with Kawhi Leonard. I mean, what what does that mean for the rivalry going forward? Yeah, the Clippers have catching up to do, and it always seems like the Clippers and Lakers are competing very often for the same players. But the Clippers wanted to keep some of their key guys. Marcus Morris, they signed to a four-year, $64 million deal. Marquise's brother, uh, you know, bringing him back was important. And, and the Serge Ibaka commitment was huge. For the Clippers, it gives them a, 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 a veteran front court player can play both spots, and they still have more work to do. Luke Kennard comes in from Detroit, who can play uh, both guard spots, give them some good minutes there, and you know they still have a few more roster spots. Reggie Jackson, who they signed last year, he's a possibility. Uh, he might be able to return to that uh, Clipper bench, but you know with Ty Lue, this is a different team now, and this is a different mm -hmm. head coach. And, and a little different way of looking at things, but the Clippers know they've got a gap to close with the Lakers. Uh, really quickly, do you have a sense of how involved Ty Lue is with these personnel decisions, how, how front and center he is with what's happening there? Yeah, he, listen, it's a pretty collaborative place there. Lawrence Frank, Mike Winger, their front mm -hmm. office, they spend a lot of time talking with Ty Lue about how pieces fit and how they want to play. And mm -hmm. I know that's a conversation they have 
every day. It's just so fascinating to have these two teams in the same building. A Clippers still trying to battle for the soul of L.A. <laughs> and the schedule comes out December 1st. So we'll see when they play head to head. All right. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks. Thanks for all your hard work, Woj. We appreciate it. <laughs> NBA Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz agreed to a five-year max extension worth to up $195 million. Wrap your brain around that one. Uh, he's coming off a postseason where he averaged over 36 per. Uh, Jason Tatum, also five-year max with Boston, also worth up to $195 million. Uh, First-time All-Star in 2020 and the Lakers agreed to a deal with Marcus Saul, the defending champs really reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for the Gasol a signing a nice and busy times right here in the middle of football season for NBA insider Brian Windhorst. So uh, can we start with Giannis, our two-time reigning NBA MVP, because he enters the final season of his contract, as we all know, but he could sign the Supermax five years, $228 million, to remain with the Bucks. What sort of ripple effect could that have, Wendy, on the rest of the league going forward? Well, well, Hannah, it's really everything. Um, to be honest with you, we just had the craziest week of NBA transactions in league history, but none, nothing is more important than waiting on this Giannis extension. If he extends, the Bucks are the gigantic winners of this offseason. If he does not extend, we're going to see a mad rush and dash to prepare for his possible free agency next summer. And if you look at moves that teams have made across the league, whether it's the Miami Heat signing four players to one-year contracts, whether it's the Toronto Raptors tailoring the contracts of their players so that they have more room next year, or the Dallas Mavericks making trades to clear off guaranteed money, those teams believe there's a chance that Giannis may not sign it. And so the whole league, in one way or another, is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for that decision. Okay, so let's really play this thing forward now. Let's talk about Anthony Davis, because the whole world expects him to return to the Lakers. So how potentially could what Giannis is doing or ends up doing impact the type of contract that AD ends up getting? Yeah, it's unusual for AD to delay his re-signing for, for this long. And one of the things he could be watching is what Giannis does. If Giannis elects to sign the, the extension, then we could see AD potentially sign for longer. But if Giannis sets himself up to be a free agent next year, I know it seems hard for them to believe that the Lakers could do it, but that might spur Anthony Davis to only sign a one-year contract with a player option, which is the kind of deal that LeBron James is on, to leave flexibility in Lakers' payroll. So there's a lot of people watching Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. Um, I know that as you were busy getting all this information, you probably had one eye on the football screen, as we all did yesterday, and stood <laughs> up when we heard Derek Carr's audible in the Chiefs-Raiders <laughs> game last night. Let's take a listen. Western Conference Finals appearance, and the Lakers, fresh off the title, agreed to deal with Mark Gasol. They drafted him originally. Defending champs are reworking their front court, trading Javel McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for Gasol. All right, it's not official until Woj says so. Actually, sometimes Woj says so, then it becomes official. But in any case, uh, we're going with these stories we just told you about. Mitchell and Tatum, the extensions, why do these deals make sense for the players and their teams? Two foundational cornerstone players for both franchises. The, the kind of players that you build around, you know, that guys want to play with, that represent you know your organization. Those are no-brainers, both five years, with the opportunity to make nearly 200 million dollars for both Donovan Mitchell and uh, Jason Tatum. All right, Lakers win the title and say, let's get a new guy in the five spot. Why was that move made? Well, great opportunity there. Once Dwight Howard left for Philadelphia, they bring in not only Montrez Harrell, but now Marc Gasol, a much more skilled you know, future Hall of Fame player you know, who can do so many things on the court offensively, defensively, rebound. And, you know, I think for Marc Gasol, a chance. Remember, this is the organization that drafted him. He was traded for his brother, Pa, before he ever played an NBA game. Now, Pa is out living in Southern California. He'll be near his brother and have a chance now to win another NBA title. He won one with the Raptors. Woj using just one of his many phones. Thanks for joining us. He's got another NBA championship. The Lakers have already pretty much renovated that entire roster. They picked up the top two bench scores in the NBA and Dennis Schroeder and Montrose Harrell also improved their three-point shooting by adding Wesley Matthews to a team that ranked 21st in three-point percentage last season and re-signing KCP to a new three-year deal. Yeah.